Welcome to Module 2 of TigerGraph's course on Graph Fundamentals. Module 1 gave you background knowledge on what a graph is, what key use cases that are driving the rapid growth and importance of the graph analytics market, and the comparison of the two fundamental types of graph databases. In Module 2, we're going to focus on the fundamental capability of graph databases, representing, managing, and analyzing relationships between different data entities. We'll break down this module into three segments. In the first segment, we'll outline the evolution of databases in general, from relational to NoSQL to graph. In the next segment, we'll use an example use case, searching for who called whom or who transferred money to whom to compare how relational databases manage such relationships versus how a graph database does it. In the third segment, we'll consider different types of NoSQL databases to do the same analysis of managing relationships. Here's a chart of challenges using relational or NoSQL databases for storing and analyzing relationships. Relational databases store the data for each business entity, such as customer, order, product, and payment data in separate database tables. In order to understand and analyze relationships across the business entities, relational databases require table joins, which can take hours and are computationally expensive as the size of the data grows. NoSQL databases store all the data in a single table. This means that the relationship analysis requires scanning a huge table with millions or billions of rows, making it very difficult to perform a deeper analysis of the relationships beyond two or three levels. Key value is one type of NoSQL database, and column stores are another type. They also have conceptually one simple table. Graph databases are purpose-built for storing and analyzing relationships, as both data entities as well as the relationships among the entities are pre-connected and do not require time-consuming table joins or multiple scans across a large table. We will cover multiple examples to understand this in depth throughout the module. Let's consider a popular use case for analyzing relationships for business-to-business -business enterprises to understand how multiple stakeholders from an account are involved in an opportunity and how their interaction with various marketing campaigns as well as sales meetings leads to driving revenue and profits. Traditional solutions built on relational databases, which store information in separate tables, such as one for account, another for contact, one for lead, another for campaigns, and another with campaign members sum summarizing when each contact or lead joined a campaign, and one more table with sales meeting information. Individual tables are excellent for indexing and searching for one type of data, supporting transactions and performing basic analyses. However, the relational database is poorly equipped to connect across multiple tables and to identify hidden relationships and patterns across multiple leads, campaigns, or opportunities. To find the potential customer engagement and attribution pattern that leads to opportunities and revenue, analysts need to join a number of large tables to run the queries and collect data for analysis. A join requires figuring out which row of table one should join with which row of table two. Such queries could take hours or even days to run. Rendering any meaningful analysis of the patterns for customer engagement and attribution among leads, contacts, campaigns, and opportunities, practically impossible. Let's jump a little deeper into some specific examples for the telecom or financial services industries next, where we will compare and contrast analysis of relationships with the relational database and with the graph database. Here we have a very simple example of a database which has users, phone numbers, bank accounts as the entity types. In addition, we have two types of relationships, phone calls from one phone to another and money transfers from one bank account to another. On the left is a relational database schema for our simple data set. We don't show a separate user table because we don't have any facts about users other than their phone numbers and bank account numbers. On the right is the graph database schema for the same use case. There are three vertex types, the circles, and the four edge types, the lines. We omit the details about what properties each vertex type or edge type has. The most important aspect is to show the relationships, what connects to what. Now we look at a query, which you might run for this use case who received the most of your phone calls, and who received the most money from you. 
This is really two similar queries, one about phone calls and one of them about bank transfers. So we'll focus on just one of them, the phone calls. In order to find out who received the most phone calls, we have to scan all the phone calls and group them by callee. To keep this simple, we'll just show the first part, scanning all the phone calls and skip the grouping and counting. Now this seems to be simple. All the information is in one table, the phone call table, right? Well, not exactly. If we want to know the names of the persons, not just their phone numbers. In a relational database, we first need to use the phone number table to match names with the caller phone numbers, then join the phone call table to connect caller numbers with callee numbers, and finally join again to the phone table to see who is associated with the callee number. That is two joins. In the graph database, we have users as a separate vertex type. We probably should have had a user table in the relational database, but we skipped over it to be minimal. In the graph database, we make three hops, from user to phone, from caller phone to callee phone, and from callee phone to user. Let's take a close look at how a relational database runs this query. Rather than trying to find all the callees for each caller, we'll start with just a single caller. Then we obviously repeat all of these steps for each caller. On the left, we start with the user identified as user 001. Each user can have one or more phone numbers. Because there are multiple phone numbers, the user ID is not a primary key. So we have to look through the entire table to find out what are the phone numbers associated with user 001. In this case, there are three numbers, 101, 102, and 103. We now want to find who was called by these three numbers. How many phone calls did you make in one day? In one month? Or if the caller is a business, how many calls were made on that business line? There obviously can be many calls. If one builds an index, it's not going to be a simple index because one input can point to many outputs. So either by using a heavy index or by walking through the entire phone call list several times, we eventually find all the callees. In the third phase, where we may now have a large list of callees, we want to find the user IDs associated with each callee phone number. Fortunately, this should be fairly easy if we have built an index because each phone number should map to one user ID. So we see that the relational databases are relatively easy if an index has been constructed because the index connects you to the matching row fairly quickly. In other cases, there isn't an index, so it is necessary to keep and search the whole table. Remember that indices aren't free. They consume storage and memory, and they take time to create and maintain. Also, keep in mind the output of a join, another table. Not only do we need to match each row with another row, but we need to build and save a new data structure, which is a combination of the two input tables. This takes up a lot of memory. Now let's look at how the same query works in a graph database, like a tiger graph. Starting from the input ID user001, we find out all the user 001's phone numbers. Rather than looking into a table, we already have a set of direct links to those phone numbers. This gives us a set of phone vertices, that is one hop in our query. Then we want to know who was called by these phones. This is just following the direct links from each of the selected caller phones to their callee phones. Notice that the links and our edges have arrowheads. They are directed edges because there is a clear directionality for who called whom. If you have a parallel graph database, we can collect the callee phones quickly using parallel processing. We now have a set of callee phone vertices. This is hop number two of the query. Finally, we want to know the user IDs for the callee phone numbers. This is just like the first hop, only we are now using the edges in the reverse direction. These edges are undirected. We don't need to specify a direction between user and phone. It's just an association. Note how in the first hop, we got multiple phone numbers for each user, but this time we got one user for each phone number. This is hop number three the last step in our query. The key point is that the graph structure will itself explicitly stores relationships so you don't need to search for them. You can say that each type of edge is functionally equivalent to an index. Also, if you have a native parallel graph like Tiger Graph, you have additional advantages. The computation is in memory for speed. Each path can be processed in parallel for greater speed and throughput. 
To put into real world terms how much slower these joins on a relational table are than edge hops in a graph database, we ran this example on a real system. We used a 2 gigabyte tabular dataset with some 10 million records. We used PostgreSQL version 11.1 .1 for the relational database and TigerGraph version 2 for the graph database. For the hardware, we used an Amazon AWS RD5 extra large instance with 32 gigabytes of RAM and 4 CPUs. First, we created a relational schema and loaded the data, storing the data on PostgreSQL. The storage size was 147 GB, quite large. To a batch of queries without the benefit of indices took 595 seconds, almost 10 minutes. If we create and make use of indices, the query time is reduced to 3.9 seconds. To be generous, we'll ignore the time to create and maintain the index indices. In TigerGraph, the first big difference we see is that storing the data only takes about 16 gigabytes instead of 147. This saves almost 10 to 1. The amount of data compression and savings depends on the data type of data you have, but compression of at least 2 to 1 is common. The time to run the query batch is only 24 milliseconds, 150 times faster than the relational database with indices, and 25,000 times faster than the relational database without indexing. Relational databases are used for a variety of use cases and are an essential part of the enterprise data management landscape. However, when it comes to managing relationships, labeled property graphs have distinct advantages over relational databases. Let's go over these one by one. In case of labeled property graphs, entities or vertices representing customer, citizen, order, payment, and claim are pre-connected via edges or relationships. Compare that with relational databases where ent each entity such as customer, citizen, order, payment, and claim is stored in a separate table. Labeled property graphs have a natural storage model for traversing and analyzing data and its interconnections or relationships, hence do not require any joins. For relational database, traversing and analyzing relationships requires table joins, which are computationally expensive and time consuming. Labeled property graphs have relationship modeled as first class entities, while in the case of relational databases, they do not enjoy the same status. Finally, Property graphs, especially those built on native graph storage and parallel processing architecture, can handle transactions as well as in-depth or depth deep analysis with a single instance of database. Relational databases are optimized for transactions and aren't suitable for deep analysis of relationships. People saw the limitations of relational databases, especially as data sizes grew and we entered the big data era. As a consequence, no SQL databases were invented. The idea behind most SQL architectures was to improve upon one or more aspect of relational databases, but give up some other benefit. Different no SQL architectures represented different trade-offs. This chart shows four different types of no SQL databases, including Graph. The author of this chart considered Graph to be no SQL because it is not relational and not SQL. For our purposes, we will consider it to be different than no SQL. The chart shows the target strengths for each NoSQL architecture and a consequence as it and its weakness. For key value, we have a stripped down bare bones database, really just an associative table. For each key, there is a data value. The database does not restrict the data types. You can store anything in the value portion. What you give up are any sort of expectation about data you will get and also any type of structured relationship between one data item and another. Everything is written at application level. This is a little more than a data structure rather than a database. For column family, also called column store and wide column databases, the emphasis is on efficiently reading and processing an entire column of a table. The idea is that entities have many attributes, but often you only want to deal with a few of those attributes. Also for big data applications, you often want to do some type of aggregation, like what is the average, maximum or minimum value in a column. The downsides. Again, there is no built-in support for relationships between one entity and another. If you want to read a few rows in their entirety, it will be quite expensive. Also because of that storage architecture, data is read and updated in blocks. It is not efficient to do transactional workloads where you can frequently small updates in random fashion. 
Document stores are designed to index and represent either hierarchically structured textual content, like XML and JSON, or human language documents. They are very specialized for the use cases and don't necessarily work well for other use cases. Graphs, as we have seen, are purpose-built for efficiently expressing relationships between entities. Furthermore, since a vertex or an edge can have properties, you can retain the general advantage of relational tables, entity types with a known set of properties. NoSQL or key value databases are used for a variety of use cases, especially for storing a wide variety of data and documents and are an essential part of the enterprise data management landscape. However, when it comes to managing relationships, labeled property graphs have distinct advantages over NoSQL or key value databases. Let's go over these one by one. In case of labeled property graphs, entities or vertices representing customer, citizen, order, payment, and claim are pre-connected via edges or relationships. Compare that with NoSQL databases, where each entity such as customer, citizen, order, payment, and claim is stored in a massive single table with relationship or edges stored in the same table or a separate table. Labeled property graphs have a natural storage model for traversing and analyzing data and its interconnections or relationships, hence do not require any joins. For NoSQL databases, require scanning a massive table multiple times, which is computationally expensive and time consuming. Labeled property graphs have relationship modeled as first class entities, while in the case of NoSQL databases, they do not enjoy the same status. Finally, Property graphs, especially those built on native graph storage and parallel processing architecture, can handle transactions as well as in-depth or deep analysis with a single instance of database. NoSQL databases are optimized for storing a wide variety of documents and aren't suitable for deep analysis or relationships. Let's have a quick recap of what we've gone over in this module. Relational databases, NoSQL, and graph databases evolved over time for different use cases and workloads. Like, relational databases were built for transactions, and NoSQL databases were built to handle varying types of data and documents for big data. Relational databases are not optimized for deep analysis of relationships due to the need for complex and expensive table joins. And NoSQL databases built on key value stores are not optimized for deep analysis of relationships due to the need to scan the massive tables with all of its entries. Here we have the, qu the key questions that we would like to keep in mind while taking the certification quiz. Select the true statement regarding how data are stored in relational databases. Select the true statement regarding how data is stored in key value databases. Are relational databases well suited for analyzing deep relationships among the data? and are NoSQL databases well suited for analyzing deep relationships among the data?